Hi there and welcome to my channel. Thanks for taking a moment to watch my tutorial. The project and blog post that inspired this video is part of a hop that I had the opportunity to join as a guest designer for Scrapping for Less. The blog hop showcases projects made with their Flavor of the Month card kit for July of 2019 and the theme is Summer Camp. My gift card suitcase was themed for travel and exploration with products from their kit. I enjoy projects like this for giving gift cards as it still gives the recipient something personalized. To start off with, cut two pieces of cardstock, one that measures seven and a half by three and three quarter inches, this will be the outer box, and one that measures four and a half by five and three quarter inches. This will be the inner sliding drawer portion. I was able to get both pieces from one sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock in the banana split color included in the kit. Position the outer box piece, the one that measures three and three quarters by seven and a half, horizontally with the long side along the top and score the paper at one half inch, one and a half inches, four inches, and five inches. Once I start to fold along the score lines, you can see the outer sleeve of the box start to take shape. I'm using my fingers to crease the box, but if you'd like to use a bone folder for more crisp edges, you may do so. Put adhesive along the thinnest section to adhere it to the other side of the panel. This will form the whole outer sleeve. I'm using tape in the video, but if you have a favorite liquid adhesive that won't warp your paper, feel free to use whatever you choose. I thought for the purposes of going faster in the video that tape would be the best choice. Now you can see that the outer sleeve of the box is complete. It doesn't take much time at all once you have the dimensions of the papers. Next, position the inner box piece horizontally with the longer side along the top. Score at one inch and four and three quarter inches. Then you'll want to rotate the paper 90 degrees so that the short edge is up and you'll want to score at one inch and three and a half inches. At this point, I'm gonna mark two of the score lines with a black pen so that you can more easily see where I'm going to cut in a few minutes. You definitely do not need to mark yours and the dark ink might show up on your finished project, but it is difficult to see score lines on a computer screen sometimes. After scoring this piece, use your paper trimmer to slice a very, very tiny bit off each edge, barely measurable, so that the drawer will fit better inside the outer box when it is all assembled. You can see that it's a really thin slice that I'm taking off each edge. Next, I'm using scissors to cut up on the lines that I marked in black ink. I'm actually taking a small notch out of the small square so that it fits together nicely without any edges sticking up. It does work well to angle the outside edge of the little square as well, but I didn't do that in the video. This is just a little trick to make sure that the seams are clean if you want a more professional look on your box. 
fold up on the scored lines, and then you'll place adhesive on the outside of the flaps. You can see after folding on the edges how this box will come together easily. At this point, if you decide to use a layer of patterned paper, as I did, cut two pieces that measure three and a half by two and a quarter, and two strips that measure three and a half by three quarters of an inch. The measurements shown on the screen are correct, but you will see here that I actually made a mistake and cut the wrong size for the two smaller strips. Once I realized my mistake, I recut the strips quickly to the correct measurement. I used some plaid from the summer camping paper pack included in the kit by Scrapping for Less. So here I am recutting the strips to the correct measurement. They'll fit nicely on those thinner edges of the box. Next I cut two strips that measure seven and a half by a quarter inch and wrap them around the outside and secure them with glue. If you want to be a little more precise you could try to measure out the score lines but I find that it works just as well to shape the strips around the box. I glue them so that the area where the strips meet is on the bottom of the suitcase where it is less noticeable. I cut another strip that measures three and three quarters by half inch and fold them down towards the end to make little feet. I used my scissors to round out the ends and then I used a bone folder to curve the strip. I used a piece of hot fudge cardstock for all of these little elements. This was included in the kit from Scrappin' for Less. Next, I'm using a one inch circle punch, you could also use a die, to cut four circle shapes. Then I'll be using my scissors to cut them in half. 
fold each half in half and glue it onto the corners of the suitcase. I used liquid glue for this because I think it holds the folded thick cardstock onto the corners of the project a little bit better. But again, if you have a favorite adhesive you think would work better, feel free to try out whatever you want. The last step is to punch out two more circle shapes, and this time cut them into quarters. These are going to go on the end of the inside drawer to look like a continuation of the corners from the front and back of the box. You'll be gluing each quarter piece to a corner of that inner drawer. The plaid papers from this kit, combined with the brown paper accents, really give this the feel of an old-timey suitcase that you might find covered with stickers from traveling the world. And that's the completed suitcase. Now you can decorate your suitcase however you would like. For my original project, I used the die cuts and stamped images that were also included in the kit. I used two little jewels to give the appearance of the bolts or screws that hold the handle onto the suitcase. The size of this box is perfect to fit a gift card. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll link below to the full blog post with all of my other projects using this awesome kit, as well as to my Instagram account and Facebook pages. I'd love to connect with you on social media. Thanks again for stopping by. Have a great day.